sometimes you just got to talk about what you want to talk about. All this more, self-evident podcast. All right, welcome to the Self-Evident Podcast. Before we get started, do not forget to go to the selfevidenttruth.com. Get yourself a shirt, some merch. Um, don't forget, you can donate. You can click on that little donate button. It's up in the top right-hand corner. And uh, pray about that. Pray about becoming a monthly sponsor, or part of our Torchbearer Society, all that. Um, at the very least, check out our shirts, our programs, resources. We got all kinds of stuff for you. Now, you may notice I'm in a little bit different digs. I, I am uh, in a bedroom at my house. Um, it, long story. You don't even care. Um, <laughs> so there is a lot going on. And typically, every year, I take about a month off from news. And this year, I didn't do it. Um, of course, last year, when I tried to do it, um, October 7th happened. Of course, I was not even a week into or like a week into my my media fast and i go to church and our pastor is praying over israel i'm like what happened i i texted massey i'm like dude what happened he's like you don't know well, no <laughs> come to find out uh the october 7th attack had happened um and i really would like to take a media fast but i just don't know that i can do it that being said, right now, I, there's a lot of news, but I'm just not feeling it. Now, I just got back home. I've slept maybe an hour um, in the past two days. Uh, I had to get home before the hurricane. I So sadly, I had to cancel my last event in order to get home. And I, I love you guys, and I'm so sad that I couldn't be there. But I'm also really glad that I did. Because there was a part of me that was like, no, I'm going to hard charge. I'm going for it. I'm going to do the event. Then I'll drive back. And I'm so glad I didn't do that. Um, just looking at already what's going on um, on the Gulf. And, of course, be praying for the Gulf. It, it looks like it's going to be a nasty hurricane. And, and we'll feel, I mean, we'll feel tiny effects over here on the East Coast. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a big one. Now, I don't feel like talking about news today. So I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. If you don't want to hear it, that's fine. I don't care. But this this is something that I think is really fascinating. I, I find how God created us so fascinating, um, especially when you get into the realm of psychology or biology and, and the way he has built us to adapt. And I think sometimes we, we so over-spiritualize our journey with the Lord that we forget that God has built in massively complex systems within us. Um, and, and it's almost like we're like, no, that can't be a part of it. And this is a perfect example. I think sometimes, Massey and I were talking about this, and this, this stems off the last podcast I did. Stems off this idea of like, God's going to do it all. You can't do any of it. Just sit down. He doesn't want you to participate at all in any of this. And, and it has to be supernatural in how he does something. He can definitely do supernatural things. He definitely wants to be involved. He's definitely going to move mountains. But there is something to us being active in all of it. Now, wh wh where are you getting at, Mike? There's, there's something I want to talk about. I think I've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it again for those who are new or the catch you guys back up uh, or remind you, this should be really encouraging to you and help you fashion. Okay. If, if we're taking that first podcast, help you fashion, what does it mean in terms of discipline? And there is a reward in doing the things you don't want to do. So, so what are you talking about, Mike? So there's a part of your brain that doesn't get talked about. It's called the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Now, the name of it, not that big of a deal, but if you wanted to look it up, that's what it's called. Now, what's the deal with this part of the brain? This part of the brain grows over a lifetime if it's properly used. 
Now we tend to think, okay, our brains are, are pretty static. Uh, then there, the theory of neuroplasticity came through and, and that's really grown and is very solid in the sense that you, you can rewire the brain, you can to a certain extent create neurons, but the brain is fairly static um, once you reach maturity. However, this area of the brain, not so. This area of the brain is achieving goals. It's about achieving goals, but there, there's a, a trick to this. And when you think about how God created us, this is so cool to me. This area of the brain only grows when you do things you really don't want to do. So let's say the last thing you want to do in the world is go for a run or, or clean the house even. It, it, it's typically stuff that you really don't want to do stuff you may be afraid of that kind of thing so so let's use a run because I, I think that it's it can be physically daunting for a lot of us when you do it that area of your brain actually grows and the more it grows the more ability you have to do things you really don't want to do and it creates almost a perpetual motion the bigger it gets the more ability you have to overcome adversities that you have no interest in doing you you may be fearful of you you have no desire it's the last thing you want to do it and it it's not just like physical workout it could be procrastination job tasks that you really don't want to do now if you enjoy something that's hard it's not going to grow as much. Uh, that's not where the growth is spurred. The growth is spurred where you're really going against what you want. Now, how did, uh, and, and if you can hear the kids in the background, I apologize. Um, but think about this. God created a part of your brain over a lifetime, mind you. It does not stop growing once you hit 50 or 60. It will grow for a lifetime. It can also shrink. But think about that. Think about God created a part of your brain that its natural function is to grow when you do the things you don't want to do. Does that not sound like stepping out in faith? Is that not a process of, I really don't want to do this, Lord. I, I have no interest in doing this. This is a risk. I, I hate the thought of doing this, but I'm going to do it because you've asked me to do it. I've got faith in you. Boop. It grows a little bit and it will grow over a lifetime. Now, there is that adverse reaction, as I hinted to, of if you never do the things that you don't want to do, if, if you shy away from the things you really don't want to do, it will shrink and you become more and more resistant to doing the things you don't want to do. And you, you become more driven towards comfort, towards safety towards towards pleasure really um and and less inclined to grow because let's be honest the 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 hard difficult things we don't want to do are most likely the things we need to do the most for ourselves whatever it is you know we procrastinate when we should be working we we sit on the couch when we should be working out we eat junk food when we should be eating broccoli you know um the, there's something about the hard things that grow us and let's not lose sight of the fact that god has designed you in some really cool complex ways and they have uses and so i'm not willing to stand here and tell you well you, you don't do anything because if, if you do anything, that's work and that's striving. And so therefore, that's not the Lord. Abraham had to actually walk out of town, right? Moses had to actually notice Moses. He argues with God and God, he's coming up with all the, oh, I'm a stutterer. I'm a stutterer. I'm, he's coming up with excuses and God is like, would you just go do this? So he does. And guaranteed, Moses did not want anything to do with what he was doing, but that part of his brain grew. And, and he gained growth in being able to do what he really didn't want to do. Gideon, he really didn't want to do 
what he was called to. But then he went out. And do you notice it, it, we always talk about Gideon and the fleece. We never talk about the rest of his life, especially after the the whole jars with candles and trumpets attack. You notice how zealous he gets? He he becomes a, a like zealous hound attacking the enemies. And we look at various biblical figures and they had to step out. They, they had to do something they really didn't want to do, but they grew in that. And their faith in the Lord that the Lord would take care of them grew as well if, if they were on the right path. And I think you can take that and you can learn from that. And the cool thing is, no matter how old you are, that area of your brain, right? So I get it right, mid or the anterior mid cingulate cortex. No matter how old you are, that area of the brain can start to grow. Now, if if you've let it slide for years upon years, it's going to be harder to get the wheels turning. But you can still do it, and and you have to have faith that the Lord will help you turn the wheels. But you've got to be willing to say yes. And I love this concept because there's a reward in it long term. And I think sometimes we, we go one of two ways. We either think this will never get easier. This will never improve. This is always going to be super difficult. I can't change who I am, blah, blah, blah. Or we think this will get to the point where it, I don't have to put up with difficulty anymore. And neither one is true. It will get better. But as you rise to the challenges, the challenges will continue. So there's always going to be difficulty. And if you if you get into a lifestyle of doing the things you don't want to do, the hard things, who knows where you can go? I was and yeah, you can call me a sinner, but I was <laughs> listening to Joe Rogan's podcast uh, while I was driving middle of the night and he was talking about since he was young, he always wanted to do stuff that scared him, the, the, the stuff that just scared the crap out of him. He wanted to do that stuff. He wanted to lean into it. And can you imagine how big that area of his brain is? And, and that's why he's so successful in so many different areas. And, and he's kind of that guy of like, he's not embarrassed to try something new. And if it scares him, he knows he has to do it. And he he's talked about like, whether it's hunting, whether it's comedy, whether it's martial arts, like he stepped out and did the stuff that scared him that that he did not want to do. And I think that's a great lesson for all of us of we can move forward and recognize if the thing scares us, we we can put up a prayer and then we can move towards it. And there's a, a beautiful success in that. And maybe you won't be perfect in how you do it, right? Maybe maybe you're a little bit short on the chip shot, but at least you're out there doing it. And there's still value and reward in, in attacking it. And there's more reward when you fully overcome it, but it's there. Um, I was I was talking to a young man yesterday about this this type of concept in a way, and he's got great drive and he's just kind of trying to figure out how to channel it and do it properly. And, and God bless him. He doesn't want to lose his identity in, in the drive, which is awesome. But he also recognizes if I don't want to do it, sh should I do it? And, and he and I were talking and I helped him recognize it. Like, yes, if you don't want to do it all the more, that that's a good sign that you should do it. And you, you may think, well, that's obsessive. But again, I go back to why would God create this part of the brain to grow over the lifespan of the person if it wasn't an important facet of who we are? If, are we going to say that this part of the brain is is uh, uh, broken in its growth? Um, it, it's a wicked evolution or perverse evolution in, in the human no, I don't think any of us, us would say that. So I, I'm going to cut it here because I, I think I, I've talked about it enough. But I encourage you, maybe make a list. 
what are those things I really don't want to do? The, the, the stuff I just don't want to do. And maybe you get a little scared or a little huffy just thinking about that stuff. That's okay. But maybe there's something on that list. You're like, you know what? I really don't want to do this, but I can attack it. I can try it. And then you go to the next thing. And, well, you know, this, this one's harder than the last one, but I did the last one. And I'll try. I'll go for it. And in faith, when you step out, you share the gospel with somebody, you you make a phone call you really don't want to make, you you step out and evangelize, you you prophesy, whatever. There is an overcoming and a growth and a reward in all of that, spiritually and physically. And that's an encouragement to you. And it should be. So I'm going to tell you guys, make a list, try the list out. And if you stick to this, you're going to notice you have a little bit more ambition, a little more drive, a little more ability to overcome the things you don't want to do. It's those little steps. But you have to be willing to say to yourself, I really don't want to do this, but I'm going to. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other and let's see where I go. You know, and, and so if you have to, and this is just logical to help you along that process, break it down into little goals. But even if you just have to call somebody, we'll just dial in the number, right? And then have a moment of screw it, press the button before you can double think. Then you're off to the races. Or if it's working out, just get your shoes on and tell yourself, I'm going to do two push ups. I know I've got a whole workout plan, but I'm, I'm going to at least get two push-ups. I'm telling you, if you do those first little steps and you just hit the goals, like you, you separate small goals out and just shoot for those small goals each time. If you're going to run two miles, shoot for a half mile, right? I'm going to hit a half mile. Once you hit that, okay, I'm going to hit one more half mile. Boom. I'm going to hit one more half mile. Boom. I just got to get to the end of the street. Boom. I just got to get down this next street. Boom. And before you know it, you've got that two miles in, right? And and I do this for a lot of things, and it really helps. And when I get away from it, that's when I get myself into trouble. So I hope that helps. Um, and I know it's kind of a continuation of, of my last podcast, but this, this stuff fascinates me. I'm disgusted by the news right now, so I have no interest in doing it. <laughs> So I, I appreciate you guys. Do not forget, go to the self truth.com, get some merchandise, become a donor, check out the blogs. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff there for you guys. And we just, we appreciate you guys so much, especially you in Texas who you guys had us out, you hosted us. We love you. We're, we're so grateful. We're excited for the new opportunities um, in Texas. So love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.